Cameron McCogan. Here. Kara Flegel. Here. Dan Risser. Emmanuel Almonte. Here. Aaron Bowes. Here. Darrell Gibbs. John Mark Miller. Here. Joshua Reynolds. Here. Kaylee Quinnen. Cara DeLucio. Kelly Snyder. Kyle Quinn. Here. Lakin Meter. Lewis Richardson. Marie Meisner. Maddie McIntyre. Megan Dalo. Najee Rodriguez. Here. Noah Robertson. Here. Patricia Brungy. Here. Rainier Foley De Fiore. Here. Refuse you, Laura. Here. Ryan Lascalzo. Samantha Brown. Here. Sarah Jordan. Here. Steady Dish Pande. Here. Sophia Palio. Cindy Gibbard. Here. Shower Shur. Here. Eugene John. And Yuna Choi. Was anyone's name not called? All right, we'll keep moving forward. Um, oh, um, Kathy was, she said in oh, the chat. Yep. Sorry about that, Kathy. I got you. All right, cool. Um, all right, so we're going to keep moving down the agenda with adoption of the agenda. Is there a second? Also, any motions to be made to the agenda? And if so, please raise your hand, which is under the reactions tab now, or actually, I think it might still be at the bottom for webinars. Got to keep track with the Zoom edits. All right, seeing none, we will now move on to adoption of the meeting minutes. Is there any motions to be made? All right, seeing none. Um, let me just make sure. Um, hmm. I want to make sure that our special presentation is here. Um, hmm. I, as chair, I'm going to come back to the special presentation just because they are told they have until about 7, 10 p.m. to get on. Um, so we'll keep moving on. And if I see our um, special presentation pop up in participants, we're just going to go back to that. Um, and if there's anyone that has a problem with that and wants to overrule, please do. Um, all right, we're going to keep moving forward. Um, is there anyone here for Open Student Forum? All right, seeing none for Open Student Forum, we'll keep moving down to a report by President McKay. 
Hey everyone, it's great to see you tonight. I hope that um, your now second week of classes are going well. We'll try to keep this brief, uh, some brief updates for you. I just wanna thank everyone who attended the UPUA retreat this past Monday. Um, I feel like that was really great to get to know each other a little bit more personally outside of just these professional uh, roles and realms in the UPUA. Um, I also want to give a huge shout out to Kathy and Stephen uh, for helping to organize this and put it together. Um, I really am grateful to uh, them for all of their hard work. Um, you probably can see that we are currently using closed captioning. Um, I'm also grateful to Lexi and Stephen for uh, helping implement this accessibility feature uh, for Zoom. I'm hoping that you know it ends up working out in the end and might even help with uh, transcribing our meetings for, mi uh, for minutes later on and helping make that process easier. Um, we are also open to any ideas like that in terms of how we can continue to become a little bit more accessible to all members of the student body. So please feel free to always raise those ideas as well and we'll always listen. Um, there are also some updates to the website which have been made recently. Um, I'm sure if, if you follow the UPUA Twitter, you saw our press release uh, put out by the leadership of the three branches regarding the confidential reporting tool, uh, which is now in place. Uh, reports submitted here about a UPUA member's service in the UPUA, wrongdoing related to that, uh, will go directly to the UPUA advisor. Should uh, information be provided with that report, um, it can be followed up on and some direction can be given in terms of what that student would like to see happen. Uh, we emphasize on the reporting tool and in the press release, of course, that um, instances of, of sexual misconduct and uh, violations of the student code of conduct, uh, as well as other various university violations um, can be reported and should be reported at the appropriate locations on the student affairs website, which we link there as well. Um, but we hope that that provides some greater accountability for members of the UPUA. Uh, there's also a revamped uh, page for providing public commentary or providing public comments, I should say. Um, Previously, this was the online student forum. It's the same thing, except it gives information about how students can come to meetings like this and uh, share their own voices. But if they can't, uh, there's a new and improved forum that helps students uh, write out what they would like to say to the assembly and then either the chair or the speaker of the assembly or perhaps the secretary would read it aloud if, as if they were here in person. We've also updated the contact us forum. Uh, again, just, just a necessary update. Um, students can also find resources um, a little bit more easier under the UPUA website tab resources now, um, such as finding a new or finding the new website to the Sora program, uh, which Executive Director Richardson has been working on. Uh, you can request a Sora advisor to help you through the student conduct process there and provide advice. Um, they cannot provide legal advice, but they can provide uh, advice as you make it through the conduct process. I want to give a huge shout out to him as well for helping revamp that site. I think it looks great. Um, you can also find resources related to COVID-19 there as well. On the website, you'll also find that applications for the Executive Director of Rights and Equity are still open, as well as applications for the Deputy Director of Finance, somebody to work alongside Tony and help ensure accessibility of our finances, as well as Director of Voter Registration, uh, Director of Civic Partnerships, and Director of Community Service, all aspects of this Department of Civic Engagement. It's really cool. Grace and I are taking a Civic and Community Engagement um, CIVC, CIVCM 211N. I think it, it's also listed as something else. If you haven't taken it, I highly recommend it. It teaches you all about civic engagement and, and the many different ways that it um, goes beyond just voter registration and education and the like. Um, so please send anybody and everybody that you know who might be interested yeah, sign up for the minor too. Um, it's a pretty awesome program. Um, so send anybody that you know who's interested in those areas to the UPUA website and uh, we hope to bring them on board. And of course you can still find um, applications that are open for various roles throughout the assembly, such as parliamentarian, assembly, legislative staffers, even representatives uh, and the UPUA secretary following um, some resignations regarding um, or after some scheduling conflicts for this upcoming semester. And then next week, just so it's on your radars, um, we have another meeting regarding the sexual misconduct survey from 2018. Um, these meetings are going pretty well. It sounds like there's some serious progress being made. Um, we just really wanna find where that data is 
um, and make sure that it's uh, distributed as transparently as possible and that these surveys are implemented much more consistently so that we can get a better handle on where these sexual assaults are occurring and how we as a student government and broadly as a university can stomp them out. I'd be happy to take any questions if you have them. If not, I look forward to introducing my nomination for uh, Executive Director of Health and Wellness, and I hope you guys have a great night. All right, are there any questions for President McKay? All right, seeing none, um, we will now move on to a special presentation by the Director of Diverse, Director for Diversity, Equity, Inclusion in the Division of Development and Alumni Relations, Charlion. We are super happy to have you tonight. Um, and with that, if you have any slides to share, I do, you do have the ability to share your screen. Um, but yeah, we are very happy to have you and you have the floor. Hey, thanks so much, Lexi. I appreciate the opportunity and the invitation and I wanna to apologize to the group for um, being uh, late this evening um, in the you know strange and exciting times that we're living in, completely forgot that in the spring semester I teach on Wednesday nights. Um, so um, I have class from 5.30 to 8.30, but my class sends their appreciation for um, getting out early. So um, thank you for giving them that, that honor. And my puppy just ran in the room, so you might hear her barking um, in, over the next couple of minutes. But um, as Lexi said, my name is Charlene Jeffries. Um, if it's helpful to um, remember, oh, um, so I teach higher ed 844 diversity and inclusion um, in uh, student affairs. So if you're thinking about doing um, the higher ed uh, master's program here, would love to have you in the class. Or if you're doing um, kind of any class where you're looking at the influence of um, diversity, inclusion, and, and equity in um, systems and structures, um, let me know and we can get you um, an override to join the class. But um, I was going to say, if, if it's helpful to remember, uh, Charlion is a combination of my two grandfathers, Charlie and Leon. Um, so really kind of proud to kind of carry on their names um, in uh, kind of how I introduce myself. Um, I have worked at Penn State for almost 19 years now, um, entirely and exclusively in the DEI space, um, diversity, equity, and inclusion space. I started out in the College of Education um, in their what's now their Office of Education and Social Equity, um, looking at uh, and having responsibility for recruiting and retaining traditionally minoritized students um, in the college. So this is students who want to be uh, educators, policymakers, so forth. Um, after that, did that for 11 years, moved into the Affirmative Action Office, where I was the diversity trainer for the university for about five years, and absolutely loved that job. Um, I got to work with all of our campuses, um, some of our extension sites, you name it, um, but it was really about engaging the folks that work at Penn State around making this um, the, the welcoming and inclusive place that I think we all so strongly desire um, that it be. And so had some really, really great conversations in doing that. Um, and then in 2017, I got uh, a phone call that said um, development and alumni relations is looking to um, start this diversity and inclusion role. And we're wondering if um, you'd be willing to, to help us out. And looked at it, had a conversation with our VP, Rich Bundy, about his vision for this and, you know, happily took that role. So in this position, I have responsibility to help us do um, a couple of things. One is to diversify our workforce. Um, come on, Justice. My dog's name is Justice, as if that's not apropos to the work that I do. Um, she's four months old, so um, quite energetic. Um, but so yeah, to, to help us diversify our workforce, to help us work with greater kind of cultural agility in the way in which um, as Penn State representatives, we can engage with folks across a number of different cultural and identity um, spectrums to um, create and sustain a welcoming and inclusive workplace environment, but ultimately for us to be able to better engage our um, increasingly diverse alumni population, right? So um, looking at how do we help keep our alumni engaged, um, but also do some of the reparative work that we need to do to build relationships with individuals whose Penn State experience might not uh, look the way that we advertise. Thanks, Dad. Um, sorry, uh, 
yes, he just kind of popped up on screen. Um, I have since uh, this summer relocated to Northern Virginia to kind of uh, keep an eye on my parents. Um, so that's that's where I am right now. Um, but but yeah, so trying to do some of that that reparative work, right? That really looks at how do we um, keep folks engaged at an institution that they have these really powerful memories of, um, but maybe it's not the stories that we tell in our brochures or, or, or in our videos, right? But trying to give voice and identity to the entirety of the Penn State experience, um, good and bad. So love, love the work that I do, love the people that I get to work with in the division across the institution, and then certainly um, the folks who hold Penn State in their memories, right? And, and um, have an opportunity to kind of get to know them as well. So a real fast and dirty quick kind of um, insight into um, who, who I am um, professionally and uh, appreciate the opportunity to be able to share that with you. So I think I'm supposed to, to turn it over to uh, questions or so. Yeah, are there any questions for Charlene? All right. Oh, I see one. Our Representative Bose. Aaron Bose at large. Um, thank you so much for coming in to speak with us, Charlene. Um, My question is just as student leaders and having the unique perspective of um, knowing a lot of the work that the university is doing um, with diversity inclusion and, and next steps, how do you think that we as student leaders can um, kind of work to further uh, diversity and inclusion at the campus and um, further training and, and understanding with our peers. Yeah, so this is um, this is where um, historically and certainly currently, um, you know, we we, we kind of see the trends that students are the ones who oftentimes drive the change. Um, they are coming in with experiences and expectations um, that when you work in a system. Um, oftentimes you miss because your responsibility is to kind of keep things functioning, right? Um, um, in the best way possible. And so um, the, the drivers for change have almost always been uh, the, the students and what they're bringing in terms of um, not just um, their contributions to the organization, but their expectations. And so I think there are a lot of ways in which students hold us accountable. Um, in this work, and, and rightly so. Um, and so I think the, the attention that, that students place on this, um, how it's coming up in um, not just kind of the co-curricular spaces, but certainly in classroom discussions um, and in talking about preparing our students, like we have a responsibility to be able to prepare students to go out and work in um, a global workforce at this stage. And if we're, we're doing that um, without the context of um, diversity and inclusion, then we're not doing a job that that's, you know, wholly preparing folks to be successful in, in the workforce. So I think, um, again, to the extent that that you all keep us accountable um, in that is 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 a really key component to furthering the work that we do here. And I'm realizing that that Adeline's comment about the topic was not related to the class that I teach. So we'll just delete that part of the video. So or the recording. But yeah. Thank you. Are there any other questions? All right. Seeing none, Charlion, again, thank you so much for coming in. So, and thank you for, well, tell your class, but no problem about them having them have class ended early. But thank I'm you for taking time out of your Wednesday night. Great. Thanks so much. Take care, everyone. Bye. All right. And with that, we will now move on to my report. Um, a short one as well. I'm going to keep it as brief as possible. First, I want to thank Stephen for taking over um, last week. That was super helpful. And I also heard it went by really quickly. So that was sounded like fun. That I seems like I miss all the meetings that end really shortly. But hey, <laughs> so thank you again, Stephen. We have an awesome speaker that I am lucky to be working alongside. Um, also with that, this actually today we had a meeting with student affairs leadership, um, GPSA, UPA, CSCSG and World Campus all asked questions surrounding wellness days, um, testing that's coming up and why testing is the way it is right now. Um, I know in terms of wellness days, we are kind of working with AAC to create some kind of reporting tool, um, just because that's 
um, something that's a worry for students right now. If wellness days, um, if professors are breaking guidelines for wellness days, where can students go for that? So kind of keep an eye out as we work details out with that. Um, let's see. And then this weekend coming up, we have the CCSG Council weekend. So Zach and I will be giving reports on Friday night. Um, love being in that space just to share with our fellow student government um, and working with them or collaborate, collaborating in any way is a super cool opportunity. Um, also this weekend, I will be going to the ABTS conference that's on Saturday from 11 to 5 p.m. I miss a lot of my Big Ten uh, counterparts and friends. Um, and it's definitely, um, I'm definitely gonna miss like the conferences, but I think if anything, this conference is gonna feel exactly like the same as it usually does. But um, I'm really excited for the discussions and roundtables that will be taking place. Um, I'm also super thankful for the UPUA retreat that we had this um, this past Monday. Um, I really liked the event, uh, the kind of the events that were held. Um, the, I forget the name of the one. We're not really strangers. I've been wanting to play that game, and now I want to play it with like all my friends and literally everyone in my life. I love that, um, and that was a great way to kind of get to know each other. Um, I'm very thankful to be in this space with you all, especially after kind of reminiscing with the retreat. Um, other than that, I think that's it from me. Um, but if there are any questions, um, this is the time to ask. All right, seeing no questions, we will now move on to liaison reports. If you are a liaison or affiliate, please raise your hand so I can call on you. All right, seeing no liaison or affiliate reports um, and seeing no old business, we'll now move into a five minute caucus breakout. And...
right. Um, we will now move into new business, starting with a confirmation of the Executive Director of Health and Wellness. Um, Haiti, when you are ready, um, you'll have five minutes to speak and then 10 minutes for questions. But again, whenever you're ready, um, you may start. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Hattie. Uh, I'm a sophomore majoring in psychology and criminology with a minor in economics. Uh, my UPA journey started when I first came to Penn State and I joined freshman council. Um, on the council, I learned a lot about what UPA works or how it works logistically and the types of advocacy that we do. Um, this gave me a good understanding of the expectations that came with being in UPA and the drive that was necessary to be successful, um, not only in UPA, but outside of UPA as well. Um, my second semester, I joined the executive board as the social media director. Uh, there I was under Liza and I was able to work with different representatives and learn how to organize and spread awareness of what UPA was working on um, to other students effectively through social media, such as Twitter and Instagram. Uh, and then this past semester, I became the Director of Student uh, Mental Health and Wellness. Uh, and in my time in this position, I was able to release a suicide prevention social media campaign, educating students on the different resources that are available to them on and off campus. Uh, if I have the opportunity to become the Executive Director of Mental Health and Wellness, I'll make sure uh, to make it a priority to educate students, uh, not only on CAPS resources, but really on the, on the other resources that Penn State has uh, to offer. I think it's really important that uh, we make sure that they're aware of those resources because I think a lot of things are just pushed into caps and uh, it's easier to just sweep everything under the rug and just say, go to caps. And sometimes that's not the answer for students and they're looking for specific support groups and specific things that they need. And um, there are definitely resources on campus for them and they just don't know it. Um, and I think it's our job as student leaders to make sure that they do know it. Um, so I guess I'm ready to work hard in this role. And I think it's really important that we make sure that students know the resources that they have um, through Mental Health and Wellness Week, through uh, the different uh, programs that we put on. Uh, anything we do, we can always touch on mental illness and making it a priority and making sure that students are healthy and they're safe and they're feeling good and they're feeling well. Uh, and I look forward to potentially working with you all. If there are any questions, I'll take them now. All right, are there any questions? If so, please raise your hand. Chair Jordan. Chair Jordan at large. Um, so my question for you is what's something the UPA could be doing differently um, in the midst of the COVID pandemic for students? Um, do you have any ideas on how you would incorporate some student friendly, um, safe, you know, things for mental health um, into our assembly like agenda or just around campus? Yeah, um, so one idea I have is Wellness Wednesdays. Uh, and I know I talked to a few about this, but I think it's really important that we're reminding students to take a minute and log off Zoom and log off their phone and uh, kind of just take a minute for themselves and check in with themselves mentally um, and just, uh, I guess, take a break from everything that's going on. We're always accessible um, on Zoom. Everyone's texting, everyone's calling, and it becomes a lot. And I think it's really easy to get lost in that cycle of just constantly being available. And it's important to take time away from everything and just take a mental inventory of what's going on uh, with yourself. Um, and I think a great way to do this would be with Wellness Wednesday. Um, and these would just be tips on the UPA social media that we post either on the feed or on a story, uh, just reminding students to take a minute, maybe go outside, go for a walk, um, or some kind of tip that would help them uh, just kind of be grounded and uh, just kind of, I guess, uh, Rethink, rethink their week. Are there any other questions? All right, seeing no further questions. Thank you, Haiti, for um, speaking to us. Um, as always, as I always say, um, I'm, I'm gonna ask you to leave the Zoom since webinar does not allow me to create breakout rooms. I will shoot you a text as soon as, as, soon as we are ready to have you back in. Thank you. Sounds good, thank you guys. All right, uh, President McKay. 
her desire to help those around her become the best that they can be, and her commitment to bettering students' mental and emotional health will undoubtedly help her tremendously as she takes on this role. I'm confident that Hattie will lead the new department and the UPUA well, and will enable the student government to gain more comprehensive research on and consistently promote resources about areas of students' health and wellness at University Park and beyond. As Hattie talked about, um, her experience, I think, is really what helps um, elevate her to uh, what, I, what I believe will be a very successful uh, time as an executive director. Um, the Department of Health and Wellness is a, a new entity in the executive branch. The idea um, kind of branched off from the Department of Sustainability, which, as she mentioned, um, working as the director of uh, mental health and wellness, uh, wasn't really um, a ironically sustainable place to keep um, directors who were kind of geared on initiatives like that uh, because it was just so large a department. Um, but I encourage each of you to really think of this as um, both a, really as a tool for you and your advocacy uh, to help things like gain better research on uh, where we can be doing better as a student body. Um, things like surveys we found go a, a really long way and I know that they put a significant amount of time on your shoulders. So this is something that you know you could always delegate to the department's head um, and to the members within it. Um, it is also um, really here as, as Hattie mentioned to ensure that we are consistently providing those or promoting those resources which Penn State offers and which we, we can't, I mean, we're not CAPS, we can't uh, provide therapy for students, but we can certainly promote it um, more than, than we have. I certainly feel as though um, I haven't necessarily done a very, um, a, a super great job of, of continuously promoting things um, through my perspective as president. And I think that this department and with Hattie at the helm, will um, some alliteration there, we'll make sure that we can get it done. Uh, as she mentioned, she she's really awesome as a sophomore, and uh, she also mentions in uh, what she had submitted for her press release that in her free time, she enjoys running, knitting, and the bachelor slash bachelorette. I'm really hopeful that um, she'll be able to tell us some of her picks for the bachelor and bachelorette in the cabinet sometime soon. I'd be happy to take any questions if anybody's got them. Are there any questions for President McKay? All right, see Representative Meter. I nominate Dan Risser, Representative Risser. Is there a second? Put in the chat. Okay. Um, are there any other nominations? Representative McColgan. Uh, I nominate. Uh... Vice Chair Rizzer. Who's already nominated, so I mean, hey. Sorry, I got kicked out of the meeting. So now you're good. <laughs> All right, with that, are there any other nominations? All righty, seeing none. Um, Representative Risser, I could not make the meeting tonight due to a conflict, but I do have a speech which is recorded. Um, just give me a second as I share my screen. Um, okay. Hey everybody, my name is Dan Risk, and I'm running to be the new Gov Chair for the UPUA 15th Assembly. Um, I'm sorry I can't be there tonight, but I have an important event which I could not miss otherwise. Um, so I'm really excited to share some of my ideas with you all um, and set out my vision for the committee going forward through the rest of the Assembly. So, um, aside, so for all the 15th Assembly um, thus far, I've served as the Acting Gov Affairs Chair for the past week and a half, two weeks. Um, getting comfortable with that role and as the vice chair under former chair Doherty um, before that. I learned so much from Tom. We were really able to develop a strategic vision for the committee and I'd love to carry out that strategic vision throughout the rest of the 15th. 
So a couple things I'd, things I'd like to do with the Gov Affairs Committee going forward is one, review PSU votes from the general election this past fall, and furthermore, develop it and adapt it towards the primary election season we're facing this spring and next fall as well for local elections. This effort really will be centered around voter education, voter registration, and voter information. Um, as many people aren't either aren't registered in State College or don't know about local elections or how much the borough issues impact um, students everywhere and student residents and student renters everywhere. I ran for borough council last fall on this platform quite unsuccessfully, um, but that was a great educational process. Um, going into the borough, I'd love to, to continue to strengthen ties between the UPUA and the State College Borough Council um, and Borough Facilities Operations Managers. Right now, um, we're working with Don Hahn, the former mayor, current magistrate, to, to establish some landlord-tenant mediation procedures, as so many students around, um, around Penn State are fall victim to, um, to predatory renters and predatory landlords. Um, in addition, I'd like to structure the committee for those of you on Gov, um, or those of you who may be interested in joining Gov, um, the, in a very collaborative manner. I'd really like to start incubating ideas um, and and bring more of a team spirit and a team effort to, to Gov Affairs, make the committee more of a work session in order for us to, to get some more things done. Um, finally, I'd love to really expand our committee's advocacy platform, advocacy abilities for for this upcoming assembly and through the rest of the 15th. We have SoftEdge, which is this wonderful tool, um, and I'd really like to get everyone, the entire committee trained on that um, so we can utilize it for the benefit of students and for the benefit um, of UPUA and, and all students across the Commonwealth. Finally, I'd love to strengthen ties with PASS and all of, all of our other affiliate institutions from Westchester, Bloomberg, the higher education system schools, um, the, these schools and these avenues offer really, really valuable opportunities for, for advocacy and to give ourselves a greater platform. So those are some of my ideas. I hope you enjoyed them. Um, I'm sorry, again, I couldn't be there for questions tonight, but um, take care, everyone. Have a good one. All right. And as he stated, he was aware that he had to forfeit qu question and answer, obviously. Um, no, we cannot ask questions to AI, unfortunately. Um, so with that, um, inevitably, I'm going to close the floor. Obviously, he is not here, so give me a second as I find the form. Um, okay. All right, so I've sent the form. Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. I'm going to, every time, before anyone fills out the form, I'm closing it. <laughs> Cool. That is my bad. Thank you for, I just, I'm just now, congratulations, Dan Risser, you have been elected as the chair of Gov Affairs with a vote of 26, zero to zero, which is unanimous. So congratulations. Oh my gosh, yeah, I have to call him chair Risser now. <laughs> All right, moving down the agenda, we have Bill 1115, Funding for Sexual Violence Awareness and Prevention 2021. Um, speaker Honoraria, um, Chair Mishler, if you'd like to introduce the bill. Um, Adeline Mishler at large. Hello, everyone. Um, let me just check in and see. I think I might have some, um, some reps and some executive members who uh, might want to be yielded some time. So I just want to check on their attendance, but in the meantime, I can go ahead and introduce this piece of legislation. Um, and so traditionally the UPUA um, um, always hosts a sexual violence awareness and prevention week um, that occurs of course in April um, in the COVID and remote environment. The committee has pivoted a little bit to uh, make sure that our events are, are more spread out and more all inclusive um, and, and uh, so we can reach students uh, thoroughly and, and, and adequately um, with their current schedules and environment. And so this year, um, we, we didn't stop the, the heavy uh, collaboration efforts um, that we typically do with university offices uh, to make um, SVAP programming uh, a reality and, and um, on our campus. 
And so um, what you'll see in this bill um, is the funding for three different speakers, um, which is even more than our, um, our traditional um, kind of efforts. Uh, but we really think that um, all of these speakers are bringing something, you know, impactful um, and interesting and creating um, awesome conversations um, surrounding sexual violence um, while also bridging on other topics um, like, uh, like diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, and so we're really proud of this list that we've put together. Um, thorough amounts of, of collaboration, again, as, as I've stated, um, has gone into this. You can see a lot of our co-sponsors alluded to um, in the legislation. Our first two speakers are being brought in conjunction um, with the Gender Equity Center, um, who really serves as the, the, the lead um, kind of spearheader um, on these events. And, and they do an excellent job of, of helping get students in the door and really packing um, the facilities. And of course, um, in this environment, it will be taking place um, on a WPSU platform. So we're really happy to be a contributor there. Um, and Chanel Miller, our, our final speaker, um, was something that uh, was really uh, homegrown and, and kind of bred uh, within the uh, UPUA and actually in, in the executive as well. Um, so I'd like to acknowledge Erin Brown for her contributions and efforts and research um, in, in bringing this speaker to us um, uh, for consideration. And we really think that there'll be interesting elements of, of opportunities for book clubs. Um, and we've really reached the campus far and wide um, for, for co-sponsors for this event, um, um, as you can see uh, listed in the, in the legislation, uh, really pulling together um, a lot of interesting offices um, and resources to bring a diverse set of students um, to hear uh, this speaker. So I'm happy to take any questions um, kind of about the historic efforts of SVAP um, in UPUA um, or some more of our visions um, this year. Um, and I'd also like to note that the Type 40 has already been, been amended, so we won't have to do that. Um, and, and that Type 40 that you see remaining there, um, that 111,000, is what would remain after this bill is deducted. So lots of... Uh, that's a cash flow. So I'm happy to take any questions seriously. Um, and also if I see some of um, the people who have worked on this, actually Erin Brown is here. So I'm, um, I, she is jumping on and I would be happy to yield her time if she is able to speak. Um, I know that she's probably just getting on, so I don't want to put her too much on the spot, but her efforts have really made um, this possible, especially for Chanel Miller. So um, I yield time if applicable and Erin could could raise her hand um or however that works yeah yeah representative reynolds yielded her time so Erin, whenever you're ready sorry i'm just i had some technology issues i just got on um i guess i just wanted to add on because i know that traditionally i don't know if adeline's already gone over this but the svap budget is slightly smaller, is, is normally smaller than this, and we expanded it to include Chanel Miller this year. I, the thinking behind this was to kind of have SVAP instead of just being a week, have it be a month-long event, and a great way to do that right now with everyone being virtual and not able to have an event in person on campus is to have a book club. I don't know if anyone's read Know My Name. It's a really powerful book. Uh, and Chanel's just, she's given lectures at other universities across campus. Um, she was a time person of the year. She's a really wonderful advocate and public speaker. Um, and we're also hoping to eventually partner with Panhel on this and hopefully IFC if they're interested. And also uh, the organization Schreier for Women is already interested in reading the book and getting involved. So uh, an idea behind, behind this is as an organization to also reach out to other women's orgs across, or not just strictly women's orgs, but organizations across campus to think about sexual violence awareness as more of a month long thing. Sorry, I'm a little flustered, but if anyone has questions, I'd be happy to answer them. All right, with that, are there any questions for Chair Mishler or Director Brown? All right, seeing no questions, is there any discussion?
Representative Brown. I mean, Bose. Holy crap. <laughs> Aaron Bose at large. Um, I just wanted to congratulate all of the co-sponsors and everyone who's worked on this. Um, I'm very, very, very excited to attend this event. Um, know My Name is such a great book. Everybody should, should read it. Um, and I know that from the Women's Empowerment Roundtable side, we'll definitely be um, broadcasting all this information out and sharing it as everybody else should as well, because it's going to be a great event. So congratulations, and I'm excited. Is there any other discussion? Chair Mishler? Let me start, Laura. Yeah, I'd also just like to add that um, these speakers will be taking place on on varied dates, which is awesome. So um, we can accommodate more people's schedules and, and hopefully have people engage in, in all of the events. Um, so we'll be blasting information when um, when ready uh, to make sure that you all know about this. Um, and we're working um, with Chanel Miller's publicist after this funding is approved to um, confirm a date and a time um, and the logistics of this. But uh, this funding is really what we need, needed to be able to get on that calendar. Um, so we really appreciate everyone's um, flexibility. And um, again, just thank you to all of the representatives and, and, and Director Aaron Brown who worked on this, um, getting this to the floor so early um, so we can really do a, a great job with it. So good job, everybody. Is there any other discussion? All right, seeing no discussion, I will close the floor. Um, and since this is a bill, it does require a roll call vote. Um, with that, speakers on, when you are ready, you may start the roll call. Give me a second here. Arthi Kalor? Yes. Adeline Mishler? Yes. Alexander Wu? Yes. Amanda Byrd? Amy Gary? Anna Taylor? Yes. Anne Marie Round Sorensen? Yes. Blake Tolliver? Brian Schultz. Cameron McCogan. Eric Legal. Yes. Kathy Minetti Zhao. Yes. Dan Risser. Emmanuel Monte. Yes. Aaron Bowes. Yes. Jarell Gibbs. John Mark Miller? Yes. Joshua Reynolds? Kaylee Quinnen? Yes. Cara DeLucio? Kelly Snyder? Kyle Quinn? Lincoln Meter? Yes. Lewis Richardson? Yes. Marie Meisner? Maddie McIntyre? Megan Dalo? Najee Rodriguez? Yes. Blake, I got you. Uh, but okay, I thank you. Think, I don't think you unmuted, but I can just put down now. Yep. Okay, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. uh, Noah Robertson? Yes. Patricia Barungi? Yes. Rainier Foley de Fiore? Yes. Refugio Lara? Yes. Ryan Lascalzo? Samantha Brown? Yes. Sarah Jordan? Yes. Siddhi Deshpande? Yes. Sophie Pulillo? Sydney Giver? Shaur Shu. Eugene Jong. Yuna Choi. 
and then I vote yes. Were there any names not called? Wait, Steven, did you call me? Yeah. Oh, sorry. I, yep. I probably just now were cut out or something. Sorry, I vote yes. No, no problem. Thanks. Okay. Was anyone else's name not called? All right, and Bill 1115, Funding for Sexual Violence Awareness and Prevention 2021, Speaker Honoraria, passes unanimously and specifically with a vote of 24 0 to 0. Um, I'm also going to reiterate before we move on to the agenda, it, I think there's just some people's like technology slash Wi Fi that's like cutting out, and I appreciate you like sticking with us, but I'll, also this is like super low in numbers. Um, Obviously, we'll address that with people who aren't here today. Um, I know there were some conflicts coming up tonight, but overall, I would just love to see more involvement, especially if you are on, you are on the meeting tonight. Um, but with that, there's Bill 1215, Funding for Mutual Aid to Combat Period Poverty During COVID-19. Um, Chair Mishler, if you'd like to introduce this. I will yield my time to Representative Ron Swanson. Um, hi, everybody. Um, I hope you're all doing well. Um, I'm really excited about this. This is basically just an extension of the resolution um, that we passed last semester that was more of a contingency plan for if the university shut down, we would be um, like, it was like a plan for if that happened. So now this is like, okay, the university didn't close, but this is still a problem that we should address. Um, period poverty still exists. People still need toiletries uh, when they go into quarantine. My dog is crying at my feet, I'm sorry. Um, so this is still a problem. Um, and I'm really, like, I'm really excited. I wrote this last semester, but we were kind of like running short on time. So it was, we, Adeline and I talked and thought that it was best to save it for this semester. Um, but yeah, it will basically just establish a permanent mutual aid box in the UPA office where people, and this would, this would uh, be, sorry, I'm like stuttering, but this would be like the startup for it. And then after that, people could donate as they please, come take as they please. Um, I'm currently not on campus, so I feel bad like kind of delegating to other people to like sort these things into paper bags for people to take. Um, but I'm really excited to work with any like with the co-sponsors and anyone who wants to help afterwards um, if this passes. Um, but yeah, that's that's the nature of the situation. Um, there is, um, I, Stephen, would you be able to scroll down? Thank you so much. Um, so there are before it was just like pads and tampons were like the main thing. But after talking with Adeline, we thought that um, it would be better to have a plethora of options, like of sanitary or of hygiene products um, available. And then yes, there are links to all the products there. Whoever did that, thank you so much. They were all just hyperlinks in the footnotes. Um, but I went through and I found the cheapest places that we could buy these things. Um, so we're not like being unsustainable with something that's supposed to be sustainable. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited, especially about the masks, because that's something where, yeah, you get like the little t-shirt material mask from the university that you can blow a uh, lighter out with uh, from like this far away. I've, I've showed you guys that during a caucus breakout, like uh, 
two months ago, but these are like, these were thicker masks that might be more difficult for people to afford. Um, and so it will not only help people be safe, but keep everybody else on campus safe, um, you know, during a pandemic. Uh, but that's, that's about it. And if anybody has any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Are there any questions for Representative Ron Sorensen? Alrighty, seeing no questions, is there any discussion? Chair Mishler? Emily Mishler at large, I would just like to commend Representative Ron Sorensen on the work and bringing the concept of mutual aid to the UPUA. I know so many people, at least in steering, were excited about this. Um, and again, I think this just pushes the concept of, of making the UPUA office more of a resource to students and um, I'm super excited about that and I'd also just like to say that there is a ton of opportunity to still get involved with this project. Um, a lot of the times, you know, the, the legislative process um, doesn't get the job done so it's, it's our turn to execute it. So we're happy to have you whether you're on the student life committee or not. If you'd like to see this project, you know, come to life. Um, there's definitely you know, many hands make light work. We'd love to have you get in touch with myself or or Annie. Um, but again, just all kind of praise to Representative Brown Swordson for this, um, having an idea and bringing it to life with a ton of initiative. So Chair Jordan. Chair Jordan at large. Yeah, I want to say how amazing this piece or this bill is. Um, I'm really excited for this. And I think this will be a way to take off in the next the future um, when everybody's back on campus. I think people are still going to want to come back to our office, see this resource there. So um, really great work on this. Um, I'm really excited this is here tonight. So great job. Is there any other discussion? put the type 40 in the in the chat if someone wants to add that as an amendment um that's friendly if someone uh makes a motion <laughs> it's seconded i see it yep all right i'll wait until speakers on um, puts in the type 40 and with that Seeing no other discussion, I'm going to close the floor. Um, same thing, speakers on. I know you're doing like a lot of things at once, so please take your time. Um, but we'll move into roll call vote. Um, there were a couple people that were kind of in and out. Um, totally understand with technical difficulties coming up, just say it in the chat. Um, but for the people who didn't respond, just kind of stay close to your computer for the roll call. Stephen, when you're ready. Thank you, Laura. Yes. Adeline Mishler? Yes. Alexander Wu? Yes. Amanda Bird? Amy Gary? Anna Taylor? Yes. Emery Round Sorensen? Yes. <clears throat> Blake Tolliver? Yes. Ryan Schultz? Cameron McCogan? Kara Flegel? Yes. Kathy Minetti Zhao. Yes. Dan Risser. Emmanuel Monte. Yes. Aaron Bose. Yes. Jarell Gibbs. John Mark Miller. Joshua Reynolds. Kaylee Quinnen? Yes. Cara DeLucio? Kelly Snyder? Kyle Quinn? Lakin Meter? Yes. Lewis Richardson? Yes. Marie Meisner? Maddie McIntyre? Megan Dalo, Najee Rodriguez. He messaged me and he votes yes. Uh, Nell Robertson. Yes. 
Patricia Brunji. Rainier Foley de Fiore. Yes. Refugio Lara. Yes. Ryan Lascalzo. Samantha Brown. Yes. Sarah Jordan. Yes. Sadie Deshpande. Yes. Sophie Palio. I vote yes. Sydney Gibbard. Shaoru Shu. Yes. Yujin Zhang. Yuna Choi. Was anyone's name not called? All right, and with that, um, Bill 1215, funding for mutual aid to combat pe period poverty during COVID-19 passes with a vote of 23, zero to zero. Um, we have one more bill coming up and I will say that the last one just made quorum. Um, I know there's a lot of people missing obviously for different reasons, but I think there's, I think two or three people who are on the call. Um, if I think it might be also to technical difficulties just because I see some things coming up, but Thank you for staying diligent um, and just continue to do so as we have one more uh, piece of legislation. But next we'll move on to Bill 1315, funding for We Care event 2021. Um, Chair Mishler, if you'd like to introduce this. I will yield time to Representative Kathy Zell. She's able to speak. Hi, I can. Thanks, Adeline. Um, so the We Care event is something that we held last year in the hub. Um, we passed out products that lots of college students use um, and sometimes cheap out on because of just the high cost of living at Penn State. So the purpose of this program is kind of to alleviate that stress. Um, this year we are, if you could scroll down really quickly. Yeah, we are funding all these items that I believe would be really helpful, especially during a global pandemic. Um, obviously, last year we handed out these things in the hub. Um, we can't be doing that this year. So the kind of plan for this is to have a Google Forms that people could fill out and um, state which items they would like. And then um, we could either ask them to pick it up in 314 hub or ship it out to them. Um, I realize that we just passed two bills, but I'm once again asking for your support and your money um, to help pass the We Care event because I think it could really benefit a lot of people. With that, are there any questions for Representative Zhao? All right, seeing no questions, is there any discussion? Chair Jordan? Chair Jordan at large, um, I know this event was held last year and there was a really great turnout for students um, coming in and out of the hub, um, especially, you know, around the Valentine's uh, Day time. Um, so great job in bringing this back student life. I'm really excited for it. I know even though um, we can be shipping things out, we'll be in the hub. I think it will still be a great turnout um, and I'm excited for it. Chair Mishler. Adeline Mishler at large. Again, just want to commend um, Kathy Zhao really jumping right into the committee and taking the initiative 
initiative on bringing this project back. I'm super excited. Um, I really hope that we can um, begin to maybe, you know, inf like the opportunities are really endless and, and, and boundless with this. Um, hopefully we, we can utilize it surrounding, um, you know, wellness days and just student wellness in general. And again, just want to put that offer out there that uh, there's opportunities to get involved um, with this project if you want to contribute in a meaningful way. And we'll continue to navigate, um, you know, um, COVID requirements and uh, making sure that we're doing things in a safe manner. Uh, so stay tuned for information and please, please, please help and contribute as we would love to, to have your work with us. And with that, is there any other All right, seeing no other discussion, I will now close the floor. Oh, Chair Jordan. Sorry, Sarah Jordan at large. I don't know if we have said this, but the type remaining type 40, can Stephen change that? Give me or a second. second. You're good, I second it, just so you- I, I forgot that, <laughs> yeah, no bad. Um, that'd be 108. This is 067.88. Sorry, like my, my headphones just like went out. All right. Um, okay, with that, I'm gonna close the floor for discussion and we're gonna go into a roll call vote. Again, I'm going to reiterate to every representative, please, if you can in any way, if it's even a text message to me and Speaker Zong, if that's the way that you can get it to us, please do. Um, but we will start the roll call vote. Um, Steven, when you are ready, again, I know you're doing like three things at once, so take your time. Yep. Oh, good. And also, I just realized that there's no way for you to know whether or not you actually voted because I don't give a confirmation afterwards. So like people don't. So I'll, I'll just I'll say your name twice if I don't hear it the first time. And I'll just say, you know, message me or, or um, Vice President Pathical if, if I didn't get it, um, just to be sure. All right, let's go. Um, Arthi Kalor? Yes. Adeline Mishler? Yes. Alexander Wu? Alex? Yes. Okay. Yes. That's much better. Yep. Amanda Bird? Amy Gary? Anna Taylor? Yes. Emery Ron Sorensen? Yes. Blake Tolliver? Yes. Brian Schultz? Cameron McCogan? Kara Flegel? Yes. Kathy Minetti Zhao? Yes. Dan Risser? Emmanuel Monte? Emmanuel? Okay, please message me or, or Vice President Pathical if you are still present. Um, Aaron Bose? Yes. Jarrell Gibbs? John Mark Miller? Yes. Joshua Reynolds? Yes. Kaylee Quinnen? Yes. Cara DeLucio? Kelly Snyder? Kyle Quinn? Lincoln Meter? Yes. Lewis Richardson? Yes. Marie Meisner, Maddie McIntyre, Megan Dalo, Najee Rodriguez, Noah Robertson. Yes. Patricia Brungy. Yes. Rainier Foley De Fiore. Yes. Refuge Lara. Yes. Ryan Lascalzo. Samantha Brown? Yes. Sarah Jordan? Yes. City Deshpande? Yes. Okay. Sophie Puleo? I vote yes. Sydney Gibbard? Jaru Shur? Yes. Eugene Jong? Yuna Choi? Was anyone's name not called?
to answer your question, Representative Robertson, quorum is 22. And with that, um, Bill 1315, funding for We Care event passes um, unanimously with a vote of 23, zero to zero. We're missing quite a few people tonight, but I also know there's like, I think two conflicts happening. Um, all right, with that, we will now move on to a report by the Chief Justice of the Judici Judicial Board, um, Chief Justice Zaya. Hey everyone, uh, just a few updates on the Judicial Board's end. Uh, so we met on Monday uh, regarding some plannings for the election. And uh, this weekend we will be proposing, or we will be presenting the violation rubric along with the threshold for disqualification to the steering committee, as well as our elections budget. And uh, just for uh, some stuff to be on the lookout for our information sessions for the elections, uh, we're gonna be hosting 10 of them leading up to elections and registration deadline. And the first one will take place on February 9th. And again, there'll be graphics coming out with all the times and such to uh, be on the lookout for. But yeah, other than that, we're in a uh, full swing preparing for elections and uh, that's what we have on our end right now. If anybody has any questions, uh, feel free to let me know. Are there any questions for Chief Justice Saya? All righty, seeing yeah. none. Can I jump in with one? Yes. Okay, uh, thank you. Steven Zang at large. Um, hi, I guess. Um, I guess uh, one of the questions I had was, does the um, Elections Commission have plans to reach out to the different communities across campus about some of this information or do they have to come to us? And if they have to come to us, is there anything that we can do as the UPUA to kind of assist you guys in getting the message out, getting the word out, maybe trying to go to these different communities and let them know about these info sessions? So I was in contact um, recent, a couple of weeks back, or I think yeah, last week with President McKay and the Department of Outreach regarding potentially using the UPOA social media for the commission to get that wider reach other than just the Elections Commission Twitter account as the UPOA accounts have uh, higher followers. So we'd be reaching out through them and also to kind of prevent, um, prevent endorsement violations, uh, to reach out to the larger student organizations on campus the commission was discussing potentially uh, crafting a message just uh, to advertise elections and registration on how to run and when to vote. So that way, you know, organizations can send that out without, you know, endorsing somebody or having, getting along those lines just to send out that general information. And that would be coming directly from the commission. Are there any other questions? All right, seeing none, we'll now move on to executive reports. If you have an executive report, please raise your hand. Hi, I have a report. Um, oh, there's a raise hand function. No, you're good, go ahead. Um, can I share my screen? I want to reveal the um, mentor-mentee pairings. You should be able to, I gave everyone oh, access word. to that. I see it. Yeah. Um, okay, word. Guys, I'm so excited to reveal this. Um, before we get started, um, we were giving out a crew neck for a tree. Um, congratulations, Rainier, you won the crew neck. Um, I will message you the details about if you could pick it up or if I could just send it to you. But congratulations, Rainier, the crew neck's yours. Um, and then before Yay. we get started, um, I just wanna thank everyone who submitted a response. Um, making these pairings were really hard, but I truly believe you'll be happy with the outcome. Um, mentors, thank you for taking the time to help another student make their way through Penn State. Um, mentees, I think you have a lot to learn from the older students. Either way, thank you for listening. And I'm really excited to re reveal these pairs. So first up, um, Alana and Patty, I'm just gonna go through them, like all of them. And if people aren't here, I get it. Um, I'll send out the PowerPoint anyways. Ashley and Adeline, Joshua and Andrew, Oops. Anna and Sam, Antra and Aphrodite, Brandon and Steven, 
Hope and Najee, Isabel and Sydney, Joe and Akil, Katie and Kaylee, Kyle and Amy, Marissa and Sarah, Matt and Dan, Raina and Kara, Shriyans and Tony, Vancy and Rainier, Yash J and Zach, and then last but not least, Yash P, I'm taking him. Um, that's all I have. Thanks for listening. Um, oh wait, no, I think I have one more slide. What now? Um, now that I've made your pairings, here's a couple things you could do. Um, follow each other on social media, set up a Zoom date, make plans to meet in a COVID friendly way, talk about your interests and get to know the other person. There's a reason why I put you guys together. Um, in the PowerPoint, if you look it up, if you download it, um, you can see in the comments why I put you guys together and just keep in touch regularly. I'm so excited for you guys to get to know each other better. Thank you. Awesome. All right, thank you, Director Zhao. Um, all right, we'll keep moving on. Is there any other executive reports? Um, I actually got a message, right? I think Director, Executive Director Chaudhary is in a class zoom class but he'll stand for questions if there's anything from his report since uh speaker zong did send out the reports so if there are any questions for um him in particular please ask them now and then if there's any other executive reports All right, seeing no questions and seeing no other reports, we'll move on to report by the Speaker of the Assembly, Speaker Zhang. Stephen Zhang at large. Um, thank you guys for attending today. I know that it's a bit tough with a lot of the different things going on across um, the university, um, as well as just having, getting back into the group of classes and things. I know attendance was a bit low today, but let's hope that we can bring that back up for next week. Um, I didn't, I was not up to a ton this week because of just getting adjusted to classes, uh, but there's a few things on the horizon. Of course, there are the two at-large vacancies open as well as the secretary due to some academic obligations. So if you know anyone or if you personally would like to apply for those positions, they are online on the website upa.org mm -hmm. under the Get Involved tab where everything else is. Um, please let me know if you have any other questions about it. I'd be happy to help out. Uh, you can just send me an email or message me in Teams, something like that. Um, let's see, I'm working on an initiative with Global Programs. Hopefully we're meeting next week about translation materials for international students and bringing more equity across campus in that way. Super excited because it's something that I've wanted to do for the past few semesters, but um, it was shot down last year. So maybe finding a different way through that. Um, I'd be happy to also start attending some of the J Board meetings on Mondays. Um, just to kind of see how elections finalization is going and to make sure that um, we're on the same page about some of the different elections protocols that we passed with the elections code. Um, one other thing is I'm looking to, again, bring in Blake Colian. It's something that I've been planning the entire last semester. Um, he's someone that works on, um, he, he works with um, health and wellness as well as empathy training. Um, and anxiety relief and such, um, but teaching different kinds of ways for uh, people to be more mindful about their day and really, um, I think is an important part of being a UPU representative. Um, so I'm looking to potentially bring him in on February 16th, maybe 6 p.m. or 7 p.m. So if you guys wanna block that date tentatively off on your calendars, um, I think that he could do a lot for UPUA, especially because a lot of us are very, very, very anxious all the time, just as student leaders. I think it's a really important thing um, to really practice mindfulness, but also make sure that um, we understand how we can work together better as a group. Um, he specializes in all of that. So I'd love to bring him in and kind of see how that goes and maybe start a partnership with him in way. Um, nothing else on the horizon for me, but I'll stand for any questions. Are there any questions for speaker Zhang?
Alrighty. Seeing no questions, we will now move on to comments in the committee, starting with Academic Affairs, Chair Barangi. Hi, okay, so for my report today, most of it is in the agenda, uh, but kind of the main things that I wanted to touch on is Faculty Senate was this past Tuesday. Um, again, we are able to get academic uh, alternative grading in through for this semester. So huge success, students will have the security of that again. Um, so that's gonna be coming to AQ next month for us to kind of do the final vote on how it's gonna be administered. But again, it'll probably look exactly the same as it has these past two semesters. Um, AQ has constructed a committee to work on just global, like international students issues and global programs. Uh, it's not really within the realms of their usual um, tasks, but they really kind of want to work on the issues that are most like most harshly facing international students. So they have um, a lot of different ideas on how they can work with like their channels within the university to try to help with some of the things like the um, the the synchronous learning that is still kind of taking its toll on international students. And more recently, what we've kind of realized the different surveillance issues in some countries that were still restrict students from being able to access certain materials. So uh, there is a committee that's gonna be working on that. I'll be keeping us updated. They're still not really leaning towards creating any kind of formal policy to help students out. But again, there's attention on the issue. So I think that's a great improvement. Um, we, the Academic Affairs Committee has been asked by um, AQ again to kind of work with them on um, providing some student feedback on their remote learning uh, formats for the past semester. They really want to get um, a, a wide range of student perspectives and feedbacks about how uh, how the different learning modes um, and the different resources that they had made available during COVID have affected students, whether they've been able to actually access them and utilize those resources. And additionally, what kind of issues students are facing in their respective colleges and departments. So each academic reps is going to kind of try to work with um, their respective student councils and their networks to get, get that student feedback and we'll kind of create a report to send back to them um, so that they can hopefully kind of help to remedy those issues of um, any remote learning formats that aren't working well for students. Again, not a lot of huge room for improvement just because with the semester already in, um, in session, it's kind of hard to make large changes, but um, it's really great that they have attention on the issues and recognize that they haven't been doing super well with getting actual student perspectives on these issues. Uh, so for now, that's what we're working on committee this Sunday at 1 p.m. So hope to see you there. If anybody's interested in joining academic affairs this semester, definitely let me know. But that's all I have for you guys and have a great rest of your night. Are there any questions for Chair Baranji? Seeing no questions, we'll move on to facilities with Chair Jordan. Hi everyone, happy Wednesday. Um, I'll keep this pretty brief. Um, a lot of it's in my report. Um, a few quick things about the hub updates. Um, for everybody knows if you're on campus, the hub is open if you wanna change the scenery. It's open 24 hours, so um, everything's socially distanced there. So if you wanna go check it out, um, I'm there a lot. So we'll love to see you there. Um, with that being said, I am chairing the hub um, advisory board subcommittee on renewing of spaces for the offices next year. Um, so that's, when I've been working on that a lot throughout the, the past few weeks um, and then going into a meeting tomorrow for that. So hopefully we'll have things finalized to share with you guys um, in the coming coming days, coming weeks probably. Um, the facilities committee has decided um, to reach back out to Lyft um, to open up a Lyft coupon code for February for the return of people to campus after the remote period. Um, stay tuned for graphics to come after finalizing that with our Lyft contact, um, Avery, who I'm in contact with now. Um, one more thing, uh, Representative Snyder is finalizing the Sustainable Events Guide, so hopefully we'll be getting um, that to the whole assembly soon so we can start incorporating that into our tabling events when that comes back to normal um, shortly. But with that being said, facilities are meeting Sunday at 12 via Zoom. Um, I know we were going to talk about doing two-on-ones. We're shipping that back a few weeks because of other things happening um, with just schedules and crazy week that came um, 
you know, or so happens when we're on Zoom, things happen. Um, but yeah, so just be on the lookout for that in Teams. And then if you have any questions, reach out to me. And also any new members, freshmen, new reps, um, if you want to join facilities, we'd love to see you. I put the um, facilities link in the general Teams. Um, so yeah, that's where you can find it. But I'll stay in for any questions. Are there any questions for Chair Jordan? All right, seeing none, we'll move on to governmental affairs. Oh, Chair Risser is not here, um, so we will keep moving on, unless I don't think anyone has to give a report. Um, but moving on, we'll go on to justice and equity with Chair Rodriguez, and I know he had to step out, so um, Vice Chair Kalor, if you have anything, feel free to share. Yeah, hey guys, sorry Najee couldn't be here, but um, most of the updates about every initiative is in his report, but just wanted to say that um, we're working really hard on the First Generation Lions initiative and our amazing committee director, Hope, has put together a great list of um, supplies that we really want to give out to students. That being said, we did face kind of a roadblock with funding for that. So if anyone has any suggestions on how to pay for that, like, please contact Najee, um, we'd really appreciate it. And for everyone on the committee, please fill out the calendar for the one-on-ones and please fill out the doodle polls for our initiative, um, uh, initiative meetings. And Justice and Equity has a new meeting time on Fridays. We meet at 4.30 now as opposed to five, so half an hour early. So thank you. Are there any questions? All right, seeing none, we'll move on to student life with Chair Mishler. Anna Mishler at large. Hello, everyone. Um, so in terms of what student life is up to, you really just saw it manifest on the floor. Um, so as I stated before, tons of opportunities to get involved with those projects. By no means are they over, really. This is just um, just the beginning on a, on a lot. So if you have any interest um, or, or want to find more of a community in UPOA um, and join some of those teams, there would be a static to have you on board. Um, again, I'm, I'm continuing collaboration with, with Panhel as well as um, the IFC to and, and, and the other Greek councils as well, NPHC and MGC, um, to make sure that we really pack those SVAP events and, and reach communities across campus. And I'll continue to do some collaboration there um, as with others as well and, and as the SVAP roundtable meets they'll really assume that role and responsibility so I'm looking forward to that happening in the coming weeks. Um, the mental health and wellness roundtable met today and had a great discussion with great administrators administrators and um, students, student organizations showing up. Um, so it was a great collaborative space uh, with a lot of cool ideas to see how we could implement these types of things here at Penn State. Again, you have an open invitation to the round table. I would love to see more reps partaking um, in the coming week. So we'll meet not next week, but the week after. Um, the meeting time hasn't even been determined yet. So plenty of opportunity for, for you to be a part of it. Um, we'd love to have you. I'm working on some some small kind of personal passion projects and initiatives, um, but you really saw what student life is up to today on the floor. So I would just like to say committee tomorrow, please, please, please come out. Um, we'll keep things quick. We'll keep things concise, but I want to have a conversation surrounding um, spring wellness days. So if you're interested in that and not on our committee, come on out. Um, and then talk about, um, have a few of you speak on, on some of the biggest projects where you could use some help and, and where there's some other opportunities for reps to join you. So we'll have a collaborative committee tomorrow. I believe no, no legislation, but um, really wanna see you there uh, so we can tackle the, the end of the semester properly. Reach out if you need anything or if you just wanna hang out. Are there any questions? All right, seeing no questions, we will now move on to comments for the good of the order. Are there any comments for the good of the order? Representative Bose? Aaron Bose at large. Hi, everybody. Um, just a couple of women's empowerment roundtable updates. Um, so first of all, Days for Girls is launching a survey, which I've put into chat. Um, they are asking, let me get the wording right. Um, 
They're asking to hear about students' menstrual health needs, whether that be product access, menstrual health information, appropriate facilities, or cost barriers. Um, please take the survey yourself, also spread it around. Um, I have a graphic that um, I put in a request thing and hopefully that's gonna be going up on um, UPUA soon. So please share that graphic when you see it um, and make sure to take that yourself. In other women's empowerment um, roundtable news, Excitingly, we are we are starting and launching um, a women's empower Penn State women's empowerment website. Um, with that website, we really want to highlight some of the women and also just women's empowerment champions um, on that website. So, if you yourself would like, this is going to be a really long link, so I'm really sorry. Um, if you yourself would like to be highlighted. Pretty sure that that's the link if, to fill out to be highlighted on the website. Um, and if you would like to nominate someone, um, there's another form as well that you can nominate someone um, to be on the website. Um, it's going to be really exciting. We're going to be hosting some resources, highlighting Penn State women, um, highlight highlighting uh, women's empowerment champions. So with women's empowerment champions, you do not need to be, you do not need to identify as a woman in order to be highlighted on the website. You just have to be willing to be women's empowerment champion. Um, so please fill those out and be excited for the launch of um, the website. And we'll also be starting back up the roundtable meetings. So if anyone's interested in either um, helping coordinate those meetings, or if you just want to um, be a member as well of the roundtable, always reach out to me or any of the other coordinators. Um, but I'm very excited to start it back up again this semester. All right, are there any other comments for the go to the order? All right, seeing none and uh, with the knowledge that Speaker Zong has already taken closing roll call, I adjourn this meeting at 8.56 p.m. Good night, everybody. Have a wonderful rest of the week, and I will see you all soon. Good night, everyone. Get some sleep. Twice in a row. That's wild. Have a good one, everybody. Take care.